Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to episode two of Learning Space. This is a weekly CosmoQuest hangout uh, with a focus on education, but also public outreach. Um, any lots of different ways to share science with other people. So today um, we're going to go ahead and talk with um, Sean Herberts, and he will be arriving here shortly. Um, he is involved in a great uh, project that gets teens involved with science. So often our hangouts here will be focused on space and astronomy topics, but today we're going to kind of branch out a little bit and go with general science because that's also um, extremely important um, to get kids and um, adults interested in what goes on with scientists and the work that they do. Um, so my name is Georgia Bracey. Um, I am the formal education lead for CosmoQuest, and I am here uh, sort of at CosmoQuest headquarters, I guess you could say. Um, I'm at Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville, and um, I am a research associate also at the STEM Center here, uh, which helps uh, CosmoQuest do its thing. Um, we have a nice center for research, education, and outreach all surrounding STEM science, technology, engineering, and math. So this is a great place to be. This is just a lot of awesome stuff going on here. So um, we're going to start out by talking about teen science cafes today. Um, some of you guys may have heard a little bit about this, but you may be more familiar with sort of its um, predecessor or its adult version, which is Science in the Pub. And Science in the Pub is something that started um, in England back in the 90s, and that was a way to kind of get people involved um, in a casual setting, um, doing something fun um, and familiar, um, and then interacting with a scientist. So a scientist would come in, um, start out uh, giving a little bit about a little talk, but then it would be more of um, a discussion. So uh, we're going to start out, I think Sean is here, <laughs> with lots of stuff. Hello, Sean. Good over if you, I'm just, hang on a second, let's get a chair up here. We had a few technical issues earlier, otherwise Sean would have his very own private uh, screen here, but we're going to be uh, best buddies here and share. Come on up. All right, so this is Sean Herberts. Um, he is outreach coordinator here in the STEM Center at SIUE, and I'm going to have him introduce himself just for a few minutes here, tell you a little bit about his background and uh, some of the things that he does. So go ahead, Sean. All right. Well, I, uh, I started off with a teaching degree in secondary education science, so 6 through 12, um, and then I came to work here at the STEM Center through a lovely program called Upward Bound, which is focused on kids from the East St. Louis Cahokia area. Um, and that was really science-based. It's a five-week residential intense program. And then after doing some long-term uh, substitute teaching, I got to come here and stay. So, <laughs> And we're so happy that he did. That's the story of me being here, or coming here. Um, the story of me being here is more along the lines of I do K-12 through outreach uh, education, and then I also work with um, teachers doing professional okay. development. Okay, excellent. So a lot of involvement with... Um, people and getting them connected with science, so which is what um, Science in the Pub and Teen Science Cafe is pretty much all about. So I just started telling everybody, Sean, about um, the predecessor, really, of Teen Science Cafe. Um, do you want to add, sort of tell anybody anything else about how it got started, um, would any you, background? Would I'm you, not going to tell you what so I already far. told you. Oh. <laughs> no, just that it was um, started out in England back in the 90s, mm -hmm. and, uh, but go ahead. We need to hear your version. <laughs> well, so you've already talked about the whole pub science thing. A thing. little bit. Yeah. But, uh, so the idea was uh, that it would be a really informal setting where a scientist could come talk to the general public, um, and sort of it would just be a discussion. So there would be topics. For the most part, I think they were based on current events or things that were interesting in science at the time. But then um, they also could relate to things to do with science fiction. So it was really kind of audience-driven for the most part, from what I understand. And the idea, again, is just to get a scientist connected with sort of the general public and kind of get a, an informal dialogue going. So okay, Right. 
So the discussion aspect of it is very important, right? Yes. So it's not just a scientist coming in and, and giving a lecture, which you Talking could do. <laughs> right. So um, a nice, friendly environment. Um, and yes, often the topic uh, of the day was either um, you know, driven by the audience or at least um, chosen by the scientist to be something um, very engaging and uh, very relevant in a way to the general public. So there would be some nice connection. So I just did a quick Google search of um, some science on TAPS, which are, I don't know if that's officially the more American version, but um, although it started in England, um, it's spread worldwide. So these sort of science cafes, science in the pubs are all over the world now. So um, we have a few actually pretty local science on TAPS, um, but I've got two topics that I just found which I think are pretty cool. Uh, one is called Animals Make Me Sick. <laughs> which animal-borne diseases are communicable to humans and are you susceptible? So a very um, engaging, um, interesting topic. And then even better perhaps, uh, Shifting Gears, Challenging Students to Solve the World's Toughest Problems creating and creating a badass hybrid car in the process. So how did urban high school students dream up the world's first badass hybrid? A car that's faster than a Porsche and gets better fuel economy than a Prius, which I would be very interested in. So I, um, you see I, the topics are nice, they're unusual, they're, they're high interest, yes. I have some bias, but I think, I think our <laughs> topic for, for the Teen Cafe is better than both of these. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll get. get we we'll will get. get to that. So, sort of the next iteration of the science in the pubs um, is this idea of a teen science cafe. Mm -hmm. So, um, Sean, maybe you could kind of tell us how we got from science in the pub to what you're working with now. Yeah. So uh, there, there, uh, there was a group of collaborators in New Mexico that basically thought, hey, this is a great idea to bring to teenagers because they could probably get a lot out of this talking to a scientist directly. Um, and so they tried it out, and it expanded from one site to four sites in almost no time. And then uh, from the four sites, they were so successful there, they decided to apply for an NSF grant. So, mm -hmm. so they wrote up a, a proposal, and it included basically a national scale-up. So uh, Colorado, Florida, uh, North Carolina, uh, and mm -hmm. the St. Louis region, those are some of the nodes that are involved. And so far, I'd say it's been pretty successful scaling it up, but... Um, our, our node includes mm -hmm. the St. Louis Science Center, the Academy of Science St. Louis, and SIUE, which is us. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're actually working through the Cahokia School of Choice in Cahokia, Illinois. Okay. So these are all um, centered around high school, high mm -hmm. schoolers, right, Yes, for our Teen Science Cafe. Yeah, and the idea was that um, what, 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 it's all teen-driven. So the whole thing is the teenagers are really taking control of the entire thing. They have ownership. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the biggest components to, to scaling it to the team level or bringing it to the team level is that um, rather than having scientists come and they select interesting topics or maybe bounce ideas off of the public, the teens are really looking for or are doing everything. They're mm -hmm. doing everything yeah. from like, you know, designing the decorations to uh, figuring out what the food, the food's going to be <laughs> for the whole thing and they theme it and... It's really kind of really interesting. They have to do everything from running registration tables to introducing the, the speaker. Um, they have to do a practice run with the speaker and, and offer feedback. So it's very teen driven and teen involved. Okay. So that's one of the biggest things. Right. So having the teens do this um, is addressing a few issues um, that uh, we've noticed um, becoming kind of a problem um, as far as um, the STEM pipeline that we hear a lot about, you know, how do we get our generation of uh, scientists and mathematicians and engineers, how do we grow them? Um, there's a lot of research that supports the idea that, um, you know, oftentimes young kids are really interested in science, they're interested in STEM topics, um, but then somewhere around that middle school age to high school age, um, either the interest drops or other things happen and get in the way and we lose a lot of our really interested and exciting kids at that point. So this is one um, issue that these teen science cafes are hoping to address. Um, yeah. Any other um, goals of, of the cafes? Yeah, uh, so, so I'm sure that if there, I don't know if there are any educators listening. But 21st century skills is a huge thing right now. And the idea of preparing teens for the 21st century by 
teaching them leadership skills, um, collaboration, uh, creativity, innovation. These are like these are huge problem solving, critical thinking. Um, having the teams lead this whole thing, have them form a team that has to handle all of it. That I mean, that stuff is wrapped in at every point. So it's kind of neat because the kids have. I mean, they they've encountered problems like. Uh, how are we going to get as much food as we can on a limited budget? And then they have to, like, they contact Panera and see if maybe they can get donations of mm. day-old pastries and things like that. <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, so they... Just give them food. Yeah, yes. and then they have to figure out how to navigate sort of that that whole new world of talking to businesses, and it's kind of neat. But it's, it's very right, very practical, yeah. um, very real-world oriented, mm -hmm. um, fosters some nice leadership skills. So that's and so leadership is a big thing yeah, for the students. Definitely. Well, even during the cafe, within their own group, they each sort of have their own roles and can, like committees and roles. Um, and they have to fill those and kind of still be aware of and, and take interest in everybody else's ideas. So even though I might be on the food planning committee, it's not just our committee that's going to be putting all this stuff together and coming with the ideas on our own. We have mm -hmm. to go like ask everyone else, so what do you think? And, okay. you know, um, the idea is that the kids really have to communicate and they have to work in a team. Uh, okay. But then once they're in the cafe, they lead, not just by running everything, but also by providing an example for the, all the other teams about how to act. Um, they have to prepare questions for the scientists. Right. So, right. yeah. Okay. So they're very involved, very team-driven. Yes. And they actually, you've done trainings um, with the teams to, to help them along, so yeah. give them some practical skills, yes. practice. Okay, very good. Um, so in addition to, um, you know, sort of stopping up this leaky STEM pipeline, um, you know, um, the teams get to interact with scientists, mm -hmm. um, which is good, and they get to get an idea of what science, you know, is like, uh, what the scientist does. Um, but I imagine they also just get to take a look up close and personal at a real life scientist, which, you know, we probably do many times a day, but don't even realize it. Um, but here's a good chance for them to do that. And I think that's really critical because um, even if you're interested in science and you think science is cool, um, taking that next step to saying, you know, could I be a scientist? Uh, do I have the skills? You know, are scientists people like me, or are they just people in white lab coats? In the white lab coat, mixing with, with the potions. hair, you know, and <laughs> mixing things. Yeah. Yes, mixing chemicals is a big thing, um, according to some people, for mm -hmm. scientists. So getting that chance to, you know, go face to face and see one. Yeah, there he is. There she is. Hopefully, and they have and, interests, uh, and it's not just science. Yeah, and yeah. they're regular people. So um, that's really critical. So students can get the idea that yeah, here's here's sort of a regular person, you know, maybe somebody like me in a way, and yeah, I could be a scientist. I could take that extra step from just being interested and thinking science is really cool to actually considering it as um, something I would do with my life. It could be my profession. So, um, you know, these cafes are really amazing for just getting that point across. Right. Well, and uh, you said before uh, part of it is generating interest in science. So uh, we've talked a little bit before about science as a perspective, the idea mm -hmm. that even if a teen says, hey, these careers sound really cool, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the right. idea of developing science still is a way of looking at and understanding the universe. Which is yeah, pretty cool. Exactly. Because, you know, truly, I mean, it'd be awesome if more people and everybody wanted to be scientists, but not everybody has to be that. It doesn't have to be your profession, but hopefully um, you would um, understand how it works a little bit better, see its value, and, um, you know, appreciate it. Because everybody needs to do that, whether or not you become a professional scientist at all. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's really critical. Okay, so you've talked a little bit about um, how we got from the science in the pub um, to teen cafes um, and a little bit of detail about what's going on in the St. Louis area here. So now let's get even more detailed here. You haven't, or you're about to have your first actual science cafe, right? So yes. tell us a little bit about um, details, getting prepared for that and what that's going to look like. Well, setting it up is a lot of fun. <laughs> no, really it is though because uh, we're just getting started so we just established our, our youth leadership team and the youth leadership team 
working with them, um, I mean, I walked in thinking, oh, I really wonder if these kids will be able to do all the stuff we're asking them to do. And mm -hmm. the answer is, like, yes, way better than I could. <laughs> so, so, I mean. Yes, the kids are great. Yeah. I mean, I, I walked mm -hmm. in kind of curious and a little scared, and mm -hmm. I walked away just filled with awe and completely really inspired. Amazed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the, their imagination is wild. And it's, <laughs> so tell us some of the things. Yeah, what are some of the things the, the teens come up with? Um, even, you know, brainstorming ideas um, or things for the food or you so know, for all aspects. We had our youth leadership team training, which you yeah. mentioned before. Uh, and that was really like, we led it with questions. So we asked the teens, what do you think the science cafe should be or should look like or should feel like? You know, close your mm -hmm. eyes and picture it. How do we get to that? And they had to basically come up with a whole list of action items of things that we would have to do to be able to get there. Um, and then they had to form committees and delegate those responsibilities to the different committees. And uh, then at the end, we had a scientist simulation. And we said, oh, emergency alert. You know, a scientist is coming. And you have 10 minutes, or it might have been 15 minutes, to, to go prepare an entire cafe. And they had to they had to do um, you know food they had they have event planning committee they had to do food and uh, and decorations they had to figure out like given a certain budget how much how they had to price everything out they had to do door, door prizes and um, figure out like where things would be positioned how tables would be <laughs> set up and they did it all like in 15 minutes I think it was and some of the ideas they came out with the, the surprise scientist was going to be um, an astronomer. Okay. It was going to be talking Good about choice. yes. It was going to be talking about uh, the composition of comets. I, it was just some random thing that okay. somebody picked out, um, and so they had for their sort of mock uh, cafe. They had um, they had they decided to get sub sandwiches that they found at Jimmy John's for a deal. <laughs> and the sub sandwiches they're going to take a baby ice cream scoop. And scoop out little holes in the sub sandwich to make craters. Oh, put yes. a little American flags and love craters. Like toothpick flags. Yes. Yes. Uh, they're gonna have astronaut ice cream. Um, I think fog machines because <laughs> they they had they had they That's had relatives good. with fog machines. So they could get them for free. They wanted like little room star projectors. They had relatives with fog machines. Yeah. Interesting. And then they went online and they found a, a giant. I need to talk to them later. I hear you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Uh, oh yeah. So they went. They, they found like a giant comet model um, that showed the different parts of the comets, and they went to put that on display, but then also raffle it off at the end. So it would be like a double, you cool know, idea. like yeah. decoration slash raffle. Yeah. Um, and then oh, they also had cookies that were shaped in. And ice like comets. So oh, I mean, they came up with just all these outrageous ideas. I wouldn't have even thought of half of them, probably. Okay. Um, and they were exploiting us and saying, like, you know, SIUE could provide dry ice yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and cool stuff like you know, one of our partners, again, is the St. Louis Science Center. So they said we would check with the Science Center to see if maybe we could like line up some planetarium tickets to be a door prize. Okay. Um, so they were really kind of Wonderful. Yeah, thinking yeah. on their feet. They did very well for 15 minutes of planning. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Yeah. Was really great. Um, and I want to take a minute here. I was remiss. I should have uh, suggested um, earlier to everybody that um, if you'd like to uh, comment or ask a question, um, you can do that on um, YouTube. Um, we have a comment um, place for you there, and we'll try to um, respond and answer your questions. So we would love to hear from you if you have any questions about uh, teen cafes, um, thinking that it might be something you might want to try with either your students or um, any other group that you have. Um, be really kind of a cool thing to get going. So please go ahead and comment, ask questions, put it in YouTube. Um, you can also do hashtag if you're tweeting. You can do hashtag learning space. We'll um, get your comments there. So two places. So please ask us questions. Um, tell us what you're thinking, and um, we'll uh, answer your questions right away. Um, so all right. So the kids are amazing, and they have lots of wild suggestions. Yes. Um, making it very fun and engaging. Mm -hmm. So um, what are some of the topics? 
did they come up with topics? Did you suggest or so as our, of both? As our net as as a network, we had to look at what scientists do we already have access to, do we already know about. Um, and so we created a list of topics for the teams to choose from just as a starting point. Because it's saying, hey, come up with a topic, you could say plants. And that's not very specific. So um, we, we came up with a list of topics that we thought, hey, we could get people for these. Because um, we were kind of on a crunch on time. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to so make sure that the kids had something that was yeah, solid. Yes. So we administered those surveys. And they basically, they could add stuff to you. So they could add in, you know, if they if we didn't identify something that they were really interested in, they could add something to it. Okay. Um, but they ranked them, and we ended up with our number one choice uh, for February, which is going to be our February cafe, is zombies. Of course. Yes. So some they said they wanted just some sort of sort of science to do with zombies. So we found an awesome presenter. Uh, her name is Dr. Terry Redman. She's from St. Louis University, okay. and she is an I guess. An expert on um, disaster preparedness. <laughs> on zombies? Yeah, well, sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> and infectious disease. So, disaster preparedness Excellent. and infectious disease. Okay. Uh, she yeah. has something pretty cool lined up for us. So, yeah. she and I have already sat down and kind of talked over lunch and coffee and we worked something out. And it's, okay. I don't know, do, do you want me to go into that now? Uh, we don't have to go into all the details quite yet. But, okay. um, <laughs> So, yeah, so zombies, it was that the unanimous that, yeah. the choice. Very interesting. Number one okay. was zombies, of course. Wanted to know. So did they have some ideas that there even was science involved connected to this topic? Because, no, honestly, probably. I would have thought, <laughs> okay, that's, there's no science connected with zombies whatsoever. Probably not. But I'm not, you know. I'm not an expert, so. But, I mean, how do but, zombies become zombies? Right. You know? So was it your job to kind of make I that connection and try of, yeah. to come up with something science-y yeah. to do with zombies? Right. Okay. Well, some of the more yeah. recent yeah. science fiction um, kind of suggests that zombies could be more of like a sort of infectious disease that spreads. Okay. Yeah. And so, so that was one of the ideas. But then um, the disaster preparedness angle on it, too, is kind of, you know, key because she... The Terry is, um, she's been through 9-11, through anthrax, through SARS, oh, so Hurricane okay. Katrina. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. All the disasters. Wow. So, um, yeah, so not just a few zombies, but um, how many zombies do we need to make a zombie apocalypse? It only takes one. It only takes, it only one? takes now, one? Now, how does that work? Well... <laughs> So infectious disease, part of what we're going to be covering in the cafe, is that infectious disease can be sp spread in a bunch of different ways. Um, there's blood. There's sexual transmission. Mm -hmm. We won't be covering that one so much. We'll mention it, but it won't be like one of the things we demonstrate. Okay. Um, sneezing, <laughs> coughing, you know, uh, basically exchange of mucus fluids, okay. anything yeah. that's like, you know, it can be airborne. Um, and actually, some, some infectious diseases spread just by touching. So. Sure. Yeah. So that's your angle. We'll yes. Okay. Very good. So what have the kids now done um, up to this point to get everything ready? Are you are you all set, ready to go for February, no. or <laughs> what are they working on right now? So the, right now the kids are solidifying their food. They're getting decorations together. They're getting their door prizes. They're ordering things. Mm -hmm. um, they're sort of in the midst of pulling together all the fine details. Mm -hmm. And soon we're going to be having a practice run with our scientist, and she's going to kind of lead us through what we've planned for her presentation. And she's going to do it in front of our youth leadership teams so that they can offer their um, their feedback. Okay, because that's a good point. So part of this, I know part of the things you guys are thinking about, um, the people who have this grant and are getting this all together, is is not only, you know, getting the, the kids to, you know, take um, leadership roles and, and get all the organizational aspects together. But from the scientist aspect, um, this is a communication thing. So the, the teams are you know, going to be there. But what do we do? Um, how do we prepare the scientists to interact with the public, or, and especially with teenagers? So yeah. has that been discussed? Is that something you said she's going to come and do sort of a dry run and get feedback? Mm -hmm. So that's. That's a good thing. Anything else that you've done in that area to prepare the scientist? So far, <laughs> well, our sort of sit-down lunch, uh, it was two parts. Part one was getting ready for speak, you know, to actually present to kids, so nine, the 9 through 12 age range. 
Um, and then part two was the figuring out the details of her, her presentation. So we did kind of go over, I mean, we went over, you know, how do you speak differently to this kind of audience? Um, things like that are common sense to some, but to a scientist, not always. She was very good with it already, but, you know. I was going to say, has she had like, done like, this kind of thing before? Yeah. Maybe not exactly. She has, cafe, yeah. but um, We were we yeah. lucked out. Um, That's great. Some yeah. of it was really simple, like, hey, assume that every single person has not taken so much as a biology class. Mm -hmm. I assume that they haven't taken a science class for a couple of years. Um, that, so, you know, try to stay, stay away from terminology and complex language. Try to kind of keep it basic, simple, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you're talking to like the public, the common, the public, the common yeah. person. Yes. <laughs> Everyday person. Yeah. That's great. So um, they're getting food ready, they're getting the place, and now this is, um, a lot of the financial parts of this are provided by the grant, yeah. but um, do you have an idea uh, for somebody who might be watching and saying, you know, this sounds really cool, what does it take to get something like this together? Um, the costs of, do you have an idea of the, where the, kids, the costs lie for something like this? We've estimated that like the food, decorations, that sort of thing. We're looking at two to three hundred dollars per cafe, which isn't very much. Okay. Um, especially if you're breaking it down to the number of participants we're already looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, because all of them get in free. And um, we were looking at, hope, we were hoping, keeping our fingers crossed, that originally we might have 30 for our first cafe. Okay. That we could attract that many people. And the youth leadership teams are usually about 10 to 12. So 30, including the youth leadership team, is what we were hoping for. Mm -hmm. We're up to 60 additional kids already, like pre-registered. Pre-registered. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, like so packed house? Yeah, so okay. talk about, you know, getting your bang for your buck. It's okay. two to $300 is about for, for a cost to do each cafe. And then to start up, we've estimated it's two to four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not including staff time or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's all volunteer time basically. And you, it's the scientists usually volunteer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, they are there at the end. Hopefully if our scientist isn't watching because she's not supposed to know this yet. They're at the end <laughs> awarded with a certificate and a fifty dollar check by the students. But so far as I've heard most of the scientists don't even cash it. Yeah, exactly. You know. Volunteer. Good service. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, how does the word get out um, for the team participants? So you've got the core team or core group of uh, leaders, mm -hmm. the team leaders. Um, how do they, you know, spread the word? So it is. How'd you get? 16? It is their. So it is their <laughs> job to spread the word. Okay. And they have to post. They have to create and then post flyers in their schools. They have to. Um, they have to update our website and they have to make a local area Facebook group. That they also update frequently, so they, I mean, they're they're doing really well with advertising right now. Okay. Again, and way better than I would have imagined. Okay. Yeah. Now, what's the limit? Can is sixty gonna? How big a space do you have? Sixty is kind of. Is that pushing it? Past the limit, I'd past say. The limit? Yeah. <laughs> Thirty to forty is really what you want for a comfortable audience size, mm -hmm. so that there can be a lot of interaction with the scientist. Once you get past that, um, what we're afraid of is once you get past that, there's going to be a little bit less dialogue and more of the talking at mm -hmm. and, and then there's going to have to be more Q&A versus like sort of the informal sit down conversation. So with yeah. 60 we're looking at more of a Q&A but we're hoping that you know if we can make more cafes in the area we can break some of those groups right. up and so, get smaller yeah, more intimate. That bodes things. well for um, spreading it out and um, yeah. getting more cafes started up so yeah so with the bigger group you're going to lose a little bit of that intimate sort of informal atmosphere, but it's good that you've got such a great response. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wonderful. Good. Um, so why don't we um, talk a little bit about the details here of what you've got planned, because this is really amazing. And um, then we can, you know, sort of end up with uh, any other questions and you know, final thoughts. So Sure. We're talking about the actual cafe in February that's coming up, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yep. Go All right. So the cafe in February is going to be pretty intense. We're, we're starting a zombie apocalypse. We're talking zombies here. Yeah, I mean, it's this is zombies. Intense. It's not, yeah, yeah. Okay. it's not plants. Not that there's anything wrong with plants. Plants versus zombies, even. <laughs> plants but, can be scary, yeah. let me tell you. But, yeah. hey, okay, start but, with zombies. Yeah, um, but we're, what we're, good, we're, again, we're playing the angle of disaster preparedness and infectious mm -hmm. disease. So, although our theme is zombies, that's going to be the main focus. Um, so we're, 
we're going to have our, again, our youth leaders are going to introduce our scientists. She'll introduce herself and kind of tell them a little bit about herself and mm -hmm. what she does as part of her job. And part of, part of what she's going to do in the beginning is go over bioterrorism for just a second. Um, we want to keep the talk part of this brief. Yep. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, she's going to go over what bioterrorism is and, like, different ways that it can be used. And then she's going to sort of be a bioterrorist in the beginning. And she's going to use an aerosolized glow germ spray. And so she's going to spray this stuff called glow germ, mm -hmm. which glows under a black light, into the audience. And she's going to say, oh, we just started the, the zombie apocalypse. Probably a little bit more dramatically. But, you know, something along those lines. Drama is always fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, at that point, all of the kids are invited to look under their chairs. They should all have a, like a note card stuck to the bottom of it that they'll pull out. And then they'll get to see who they are for the day. So they could be a four-year-old. Um, they could be a 36-year-old astrophysicist. They could be uh, a 90-year-old governor or mm -hmm. a garbage man or so uh, a whole range 10 year old with leukemia society I mean, yeah. anybody yep so yep. so that's who they are for the day they have to act like that person um some of them will also become zombies because they've already been infected there's no hope for them they're zombies okay yeah so we'll have zombies and then we'll have a bunch of a huge range of regular people um and <laughs> I don't know if you, you can call, allow them, you, or you can allow them to trade roles once they find out no, who they who they are. I don't think you know. so. I mean, they probably will, but <laughs> you don't want to be the zombie. <laughs> I said regular people, but I also said astrophysicists. I don't know. Well, well, yeah, there could be a big fight over who wants to be the astrophysicist. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, so they're going to have these cards. That's who they have to be for the day. The zombies, they uh, they get a special role during the rest of this. There's kind of it's kind of like a game. Um, we take the zombies aside and we put the glow germ on their hands so they can infect people. And everyone else gets put into groups. They're their survival group. Mm -hmm. And they have to go through a series of stations. At each station, well, on their way to each station, they're followed by these sort of glow germ hand zombies. And <laughs> at each station, um, they're give, there's a zombie who asks them a trivia question about infectious disease. And, then, and spreading of infectious disease or disaster mm -hmm. preparedness. They ask them a trivia question related to the night's topic. They have 60 seconds to get their answer correct. Okay. After okay. 60 seconds, the, the glow germ hand zombies start closing in. <laughs> and um, so, you know, they, they can only touch certain parts of you to keep things appropriate and, you know, <laughs> so, but... But um, if they get glow germ on you, they're spreading that infectious disease to you. Now, the kids don't, aren't going to know about the glow germ part of it. Mm -hmm. They're just going to know you don't want to be tagged by a zombie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's bad. So, they don't know for counting number of times, like, contacted. <laughs> they don't yeah. really know. Okay. But they know you don't want to be contacted. You don't want to come in contact with a zombie. Um, so they move through the stations. At the end, uh, oh, I, actually, during each station, uh, each zombie who's asking a trivia question will also try to infect them, um, but can only infect them in one way. So let's say you're a zombie at station one and I'm zombie at station mm -hmm. two. You may take a handful of glow, glow germ and fake sneeze it onto the people moving through the stations. And me at station two, maybe my job will be to cough it on them. Um, and we have some liquid glow germ too, oh, so yes. there may be some vomit and blood. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting. All high interest stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then there will be one where you come in contact with something the zombie touches, and then there will be one where uh, you come in contact with the zombie. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So each place you can get infected <laughs> by the zombie, each place you have 60 seconds to answer a question, and if you don't, you can be infected by the, the zombies who are done. hunting you down. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Sounds excellent. At the end, um, they've been glow germed all over the place, potentially. But they don't know. They don't. You don't know how much, and they don't know that they've been covered in glow germ at all. Mm -hmm. At the end, they break out black lights, and they look to see how much glow germ is on them, and what areas the glow germ is on. And so if maybe maybe they got it on their hands and then touched their face. So there are certain areas that if you've touched, if you have glow germ there, you're dead. And there are certain areas that, you know, there's unaware, a higher severity yeah. or risk of infection. Um, yeah. And you could end up, basically, there's, there's a scale that's going to be made up to be, like, where it is, slash how much of it you're covered with. And the scale will go from healthy 
two dead. Two dead. Or undead. Undead. Undead, because they'd be zombies. So, yeah. yeah. Hopefully you can cruise right past dead and make and it to undead right and to continue undead. your life, sort of, <laughs> <laughs> and have fun. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, then we'll, so before we actually, before we plot the glow lights, we're going to be talking of, she's going to ask, the scientists will ask the kids, what are different ways that you might have come in contact with the disease? And they have to kind of brainstorm, and she says, well, actually, well, we can actually measure it, and that's when they'll pull the glow lights and look at and see how much yeah, they're covered. Lovely, all um, right. But then okay. after that point, uh, if there's time, which I anticipate there will be, we're going to go into a small and large group ethics debate because this is something that Dr. Rebman has to do for her classes that she teaches. Mm -hmm. um, and the ethics debate is you are who your card says you are. Uh, and you're in your group of maybe, we'll say, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll combine groups 10 to 12. Um, who lives and who dies with a limited amount of treatment and vaccine? Okay. Yeah. And who do you give each to? Very real world. Yeah. So. So they have to talk in their smaller groups, mm -hmm. um, and then they have to come together as a larger group and talk about it okay. at that scale too. So, uh, at, at the end of that, you know, she'll also ask them like, you know, how do you think this applies to the real world? Mm -hmm. So we're making some immediate real world, world connections because now we've covered how diseases are spread mm -hmm. and who do you save? And these are mm -hmm. real things that we have to deal with in the face of infectious diseases. Yep. So hopefully they will get a nice uh, discussion going and uh, a little bit of argument in a controlled way with uh, supporting their position um, with uh, with some sort of evidence that they, you know, come up with some sort of rationale for their choice of who to save and. And hopefully everyone yeah. will be invested in who their card says they are, and they'll they'll want to they'll want to live. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, so um, we have a little demo here. That uh, sure. would you like to uh, do this? If you're not familiar um, with glow germ, a lot of times this is used um, in health professions, um, and sometimes in the classroom when we're teaching um, children how to properly wash their hands. Um, this is something where after you wash your hands, you can see how great of a job you did by shining the black light on your hands. Um, let you put it right there. Do you think so? Like the camera can see it better, I should do it. Um, this yeah. one doesn't work. So, oh. <laughs> so um, you can then shine the black light on your hands and see just how much of the stuff you've really washed off. So, let's see. So what we're going to do is just real quick, yes, dim the lights. Don't be scared. All it's going right. to get a little spooky. <laughs> and actually, do you have a way to turn the um, light up there? Okay. Even spookier. Hold on. Whee! All right, so hopefully we can we can find a way. We can get this close enough that we can see this. I can hold it up. Oh, okay. We'll try it. There's two okay. different kinds of glow germ. There's our, um, our powder version and our liquid version. So this would be like our blood and vomit, and this would be like our sneezes Excellent. and coughs and... Where can you get this stuff? Uh, you... We have to order it for online from the actual company. So it's from Glow Germ Co., I believe it's called. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. And Glow is G-L-O, so if you're looking it up, there's no W. So Glow Germ Co. <laughs> is where to look for it. Uh, but if you just type in, I mean, do a Google search, yep. I'm sure you'll find it. Good old Google. All over the place. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's see okay. if we can get this. So you're going to go ahead and... Yes. Are you going to sneeze or cough this or would vomit like it? Or would you, you like just to kind of... Not really, no. <laughs> I'm not ready we'll for the zombie different. apocalypse yet. We'll I'm not ready. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit on my hand here. Okay. Okay. All right. And... and I don't know if you... It, you can kind of oh, see well, how, it's pretty how very bright that is. Darn bright. So that's just a small... So what if you, uh, oh, there we go. That's lovely. We'll kind of smear that. <laughs> right, right like that? Ah, okay. So now, <laughs> ooh, I need to be closer light. Okay, ooh, you can see how, yes. Apparently, I'm on my way to zombiedom. Ooh. Lovely. So <laughs> I could see a little bit of uh, excitement and mayhem breaking out when you get the black lights going with the kids and they, they see. Yeah. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I yes. Mean, okay. I'm gonna power back. And again, here. if it's like there, no, I'm dead. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. So nose, mouth area, not good. Hand, really maybe bad. we yeah. just, you know, lose a hand or something, but could still carry on with our our day to day activities. Well, yeah. Maybe. 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 Unless it's like you lost your right hand and you're righty. <laughs> then life would be really annoying, but we could still maybe make it through. Absolutely. So, and if, you know, inhaled into the lungs and all that, also probably not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Just bring the light of day back here. Uh, toward, okay, the end, nice. toward the end, if we have more time, cool. um, yeah. we're also going to be doing some sort of like hand wash demos. So... <laughs> We're gonna go under a black light. So, Not today. I mean, I mean for the cafe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so hygiene is always good. It is, yes. especially when you're dealing with dealing with infectious disease. Yeah, and zombies. And zombies. Yeah. So we're gonna use our liquid glow germ, and this is usually used. Um, you put it on the kids' hands, and they wash, and then they can put it under the black light and see, ooh, it's pretty and orange, and then <laughs> they have to go wash their hands, and um, then they get to come back under the black light and be like, oh, okay, I'm fine. Oh. <laughs> and, see, and see how not. good they did or did yeah. not wash their hands. And okay. so that's that's one of the things we'll Excellent. Kind okay. of do to demonstrate. That's what that stuff's yeah. always used for. And, um, you know, so good. Yeah. Get that extra lesson in there mm -hmm. right away. Okay, wonderful. So um, we don't have any questions here yet, but if you do have a question, um, go ahead and post it to the YouTube comments or hashtag learning space and we will answer your questions. We've got just a few minutes left here. Um, so if people are out there um, thinking, hey, maybe this is something I would like to try with my school, um, maybe even something I'd like to get going in my own community, um, or even if you know teachers are out there and they're interested just in you know the kind of activity that you just described and they want to try that in their classroom, um, I know you have plans to make these materials and um, resources sort of generally available at least at some point. So you want we're to working talk on about sort of a, uh, yeah, yeah what you're going to do to share. We're working on a national website right a national level website right now. Um, but for the time being, you can find information at the New Mexico's website. And so if you type in um, cafenm.org, I believe is their web address. And okay. you could also just Google search Science Cafe. New Mexico, New Mexico. <laughs> and you'll find they have a, a link to the to the left on their page that says um, start your own cafe and it just has it has tons of resources like everything from like uh, what your first workshop with the teens could look like down mm -hmm. to you know here's some documents you can give your scientists to help them better understand how to speak to a high school age group and they're okay. actually working on adding even more so they're working on video tutorials and things like that okay wonderful yeah. But eventually, this will be a national uh, yes. site where anybody can easily access lots of resources. And, and things. So, so yep. So whether you want to do this full blown um, in your community or your school, or you're just looking for some interesting uh, zombie-related activities, um, you never know what you will find uh, if you take a look at uh, the websites for the team cafes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, um, are there anything else you want to add? Um, about your teen cafes, do you have a a, um, a topic for the next one yet? We do. Or, um, okay. We're looking at how are you going to top zombies? Is my question. How are uh, you going to? So we're looking at. I think we're looking at um, something like robotic prosthetics. All right. So I don't know. What is Could it? be helpful like um, if you survive the zombie apocalypse, right? Bionics. You something. might need that extra arm or leg, right? Yeah. So okay. that's what we're looking at for the next one, and then the kids chose for their third one. Psychology of Aging, which is kind of fascinating. Wow. Yeah. That is fascinating. Yeah. I would not have expected that. I wouldn't have either. Did they tell you why? I mean, no. did they just that you that <laughs> was just on the list? It was that we had two ways to rank the psychology topics. Psychology like of a, aging. Wow. One through five, with like <laughs> one being I don't want I don't want to talk about this. Five being like I really want to talk about this. And then we all they also had to rank um, their top three choices. And psychology of aging was not only rated high. Is also on top three choices for almost all the kids. Are they hoping they'll learn how to deal with their parents and their grandparents? <laughs> yes, maybe they're scared. I don't wow. know. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's that's wonderful. Yeah. So it just goes to show, you know, the teenagers—they're awesome. Mm -hmm. um, lots of fun. All right. So, um, and I just had one other question. So this is for the teenagers, obviously. Um, 
Do you get asked if maybe little brother or sisters can tag along, a whole family comes, or is it really we do. It's, just teens? It's aimed at high school. Right. Um, but if somebody else shows up, the rule of thumb is like we don't advertise to younger kids or adults. If they show up um, and they're family members or something, we don't turn them away. Okay. Yeah. If they're younger kids and they're not family members, we still don't turn them away. Okay. Because you don't want to turn a kid away from science. No, you definitely don't. And not the zombie apocalypse no. either. <laughs> All right. So how to make science fun and connect with it and then and start to see some of those good science scientist role models um, that you don't often get to see um, every day. So, so that is, um, I think, let's see if we've got anything else in the chat area here. Okay. Yeah, I think. Okay, I don't think we have anything. So um, I think we'll go ahead and wrap um, episode two up for this week. Um, I will say that although we had our usual little glitches of technology, um, not as big a problem as last week. So <laughs> we're moving forward. We're getting better. Um, and this is a weekly uh, a weekly um, hangout. So please. Um, Watch Google Plus um, for the next week's topics um, and uh, join us every week. We'll be here every Wednesday. So uh, I want to thank Sean Herberts again for uh, being our guest today. Um, good luck with the teens. Good luck with the zombies. Thanks. Um, and we'll have to check in again um, maybe in a month or two and see how it's all going. Yeah. Thank okay. you for having me. All right. You're welcome. Okay, well, thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we will see you again uh, next Wednesday.